Good evening. Welcome back to our Old Testament studies. Here we are Sunday night, and we've made it in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, the book of beginnings, to chapter 21. We're picking back up in the Abraham story where God's been promising him, since we've known him in the Bible here, that he's going to give him descendants. And Abraham's having to learn patience, about like we're having to learn patience with this pandemic. I want it to be over now. Abraham kept thinking he wanted that son now. But years and years have gone by, but God keeps showing up, and God keeps giving him the promise that I'm going to give you land and progeny. In verse 1 of chapter 21, the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Now see, that's one thing you can depend on. I've said before, you can't depend on your feelings, but you can depend on the word of God. If God said it, then God's going to do it as he said. And if God said it on the pages of this book, he's going to do as he's spoken. Now that's good news because if you're a Christian as a child of God, you can go through this book and you can turn page after page and you can highlight and mark and say, that's a promise that God's made to me. And God's going to keep his word because he's always going to do as he has spoken. He showed back up to Sarah to do as he had spoken. Verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time, which God had spoken unto, it wasn't in Abraham's time, see, it was in God's time. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac, which means laughter. And Abraham circumcised his son. He gave him the seal of the covenant, said, Son, you've been born into the covenant people of God. Now, Isaac still had to grow up and have his own faith, but Abraham claimed him for God. He is eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham, get ready for this. Are you sitting down? Abraham's a new daddy now. Abraham was 100 years old. I believe Sarah was 90 at this time. You know what that means? It's a miracle birth. It's a miracle. We could do a whole sermon and go through here and say the comparisons and contrasting with the birth of Isaac and the birth of Jesus. A miraculous birth and on and on. Therefore, so as Jesus didn't have any earthly daddy, he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, And Sarah said, God's made me to laugh so that all that hear me will laugh with me. Every time she says to su for supper time, Isaac, <laughs> she's saying laughter. And she said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck, that she had bare children at her old age? For I've borne him a son in his old age, she said. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abram, Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So keep that in mind. These little bitty babies. I don't know, back then I think they weaned them. They was like three or four or five years old time they were weaned. But uh, the day that he was weaned, Abraham says, we're going to have a big feast celebration. Now remember, Abraham's already got one son. It wasn't the child of promise. It's when they tried to help God out. And Abraham and Hagar had a son instead of Abraham and Isaac, Ishmael. Verse 9, And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, their maid, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Now, I bet you he was a little bit jealous all this fuss that's been made over his little brother, half-brother, if you want to be technical. Wherefore, she said to Abraham, Sarah did, Get rid of that woman, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And understandably so, the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. It wasn't Sarah's son, but that other boy was his son too, see? And Abraham probably didn't know what to do, but God showed up and said, She's right, you got to get rid of him, Abraham. I won't receive him. God said to Abraham, Let it not be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman and all that Sarah has said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, listen to her. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, Isaac was the child of promise. It was Isaac that the Messiah was lined through. And also, though God says, also the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation. If you watch the evening news, 
You've got Israel over there too, the descendants of Isaac, and you've got all them Arabs over there that's fighting with them constantly, and uh, it started way back here because he's your seed too. They both of them claim Abraham's seed, as Christians do too, spiritually. We all, we all, claim, all faiths claim Abraham, at least the faiths of the Arabs and the Jews. That'd be the Muslims and the Jews and the Christians. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. He took bread and a bottle of water and he gave it to Hagar and put it on her shoulder. And the child said, here's some bread, here's a baby, and here's some water. <laughs> See ya. And he sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of, Be of Beersheba. And the water was spent or gone in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat down over against him a good way off as if it were a bow shot, maybe a couple hundred yards away because she didn't want to watch her child die. And she said, no, I don't want to let me see not the death of the child. She, in other words, they gave up. She gave up. They just went there to, to die. They got of water and they're in the wilderness and nothing to do here. And they're going to be dead unless God intervenes. And she said over against him, she lift up her voice and she wept, verse 17. And God heard the voice, not of Hagar, it's interesting to me. God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What ail thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in your hand, for I'll make him a great nation. Arabs. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Makes you wonder, did God just create that well or did God just allow her to see what's been under her nose there anyway? And she, and she went and filled the bottle of water and gave the lad drink and God was with the lad and grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. So it jumps all the way down where his wife come from. And that's where the Bible stops following the line of Ishmael. Because the Bible's interested in following the line of Isaac, whom we're going to come down to the Messiah, Jesus, eventually. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, chief captain of his host, be Abimelech and his general, I guess, they spoke unto Abraham, saying, God's with you in all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me, here by God, that thou wilt not deal falsely with me or my son, nor with my son's son. Let's make a deal. We'll be not enemies, but friends. But according to the kindness that I've done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me. And to the land where thou hast sojourned, and Abram said, I promise, I will swear that. And Abraham reproved Abimelech then, because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I wot not. That's literally 1611 English for I know not. I don't know. I didn't know anything about this, he's going to say. Uh, I still hear that used once in a while. It's usually in some of the elderly folks' houses. They have a little shelf of sitting over there in the corner and they've got little old things on it that they've picked up souvenirs when they went different places and maybe little figurines and things, and they'll call that their whatnot shelf. <laughs> that literally means they don't know. There's no telling what may be on that shelf. It comes out of the Bible here. Abimelech says, I what not who hath done this thing. I don't know nothing about it. Neither did you tell me. Neither yet heard I of it, but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and both of them, they made a covenant together. They, they want to make a deal out here in the desert that are going to treat one another right. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock off by themselves, and Abimelech said to Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which you set by themselves? And he, Abraham, said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my, my hand, I'm going to give them to you, that they'll be a witness for me, that, that I, dug, I dug that well. I have digged this well. Wherefore, he, being a Abraham here, called that place Beersheba. That's what, how it got its name. It means, I think, place of the covenant, Beersheba, because they both swear of them, and thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. And Abimelech rose up. That's basically a place in the Bible that's 
maybe more than anything else because we run across Beersheba on later in the Bible time and time again that here it shows us how it got that name, the place of the covenant. Abimelech rose up and by called the chief captain his host and they returned to the land of the Philistines. And Abraham, he planted a grove, a grove of trees in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord. Now, remember when we've wandered all over the place already with Abraham. Remember, he's a, a Hebrew, which is a pilgrim or a wanderer or a nomad. That everywhere Abraham went, what did he do? He, he built him a place to live and he had a place to work. And here, once again, he always built him a place to worship. So now he's planted a, a place here and he says, there he called on the name of the Lord. And just to make sure you understand, there's a lot of gods all over the place back then. It's the true God. It says, he called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Because them other gods, the fake gods, they rot or they die. Or they just fade away And sometimes. But there's the everlasting God that lasts forever. He has no end. He's had no beginning and he has no end. The eternal God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. Now we'll just close with saying, I hope you know the everlasting God. And the Bible teaches us, when we take the whole of the Bible, we get over it, there's no way to know that everlasting God except through the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, who died for your sins, rose again, and lives forever to be your ever-present friend and companion and helper. See you next week.